We're heading to what some would argue is the real Silicon Valley. Unlike in California, where they mainly design technology, here on Taiwan's west coast, they actually make it. At a top university research lab, we're suiting up. So you step into this. And getting so ready. It's quite a process just getting into one of these labs. There are plenty of precautions to make sure dust and other impurities don't get in. Introducing us to the world of semiconductors is researcher Chen Sunzen. A semiconductor like a building, a, a, build a building. So you need a first floor, second floor, third floor, and up, up, up. So this is one floor. In this lab, he's training the next generation of physics and material science students to go out and make the most vital parts of the devices we all use. A handful of countries design the chips, supply the chemicals and make the machinery, including the US. But Taiwan's specialty is putting it all together. I think um, Taiwanese people really working hard. We do not afraid of hard working for uh, over, overworking in a high pressure uh, situation. Ariel Kuo, a master's student, has her sights set on working in one of the big chip machine tool companies in Taiwan. Uh, many teachers teach us science or math or uh, engineering, something like this from junior high school or senior high school. So we have learned most knowledge uh, from we are very uh, young. The city of Shinju attracts top science students from across Taiwan because of its semiconductor industry. Many of the students at the lab will likely end up at our next stop here in Shinju. There's one giant manufacturer here that towers above them all. TSMC pumps out close to 60% of the semiconductor chips used around the world and makes 90% of the most advanced ones. Technology used in phones and laptops, all the way to missile systems. TSMC made nearly $48 billion in profit last year, making it the most valuable and indispensable chip company in the world and it's increasingly caught between the US and China. Almost every person touches a TSMC-made chip every day in their smartphone or in the data centers that they uh, store data on. Chris Miller, a professor at Boston's Tufts University, is the author of Chip War, a book examining the growing battle over semiconductors between the US and China. He says the moves by American tech companies decades ago to outsource chip manufacturing to Taiwan was, with hindsight, a horrible error. Well, when a lot of the outsourcing first started 20 or 30 years ago, Beijing desired to take Taiwan but had absolutely no capabilities to do so. For a long time, China's military was unsophisticated, it was much smaller, and the US had a real obvious military advantage in the Taiwan Straits, but that's changed a lot over the past 10 to 20 years. In recent weeks, Chinese fighter jets have flown closer than ever to Taiwan, while naval ships regularly do drills near the island. Beijing's constant pressure campaign has stepped up a gear in response to expressions of support for Taiwan from high-level US leaders. America's determination to preserve democracy here in Taiwan and around the world remains ironclad. The US is so worried about Taiwan, it's convinced TSMC to build an advanced semiconductor factory in America as part of efforts to start making chips at home again. These chips were invented in America. Let's get that straight, they were invented in America. We used to make 40% of the world's chips. In the last several decades, we lost our edge. We're down to only producing 10%. We're going to make sure the supply chain for America begins in America. And last October, the US announced new export controls, which restricted the sale of any semiconductors to China if they're manufactured with American-made equipment, 
a rule that would limit TSMC's ability to sell its products to some Chinese customers. The US has repeatedly used its national power to abuse export controls and politicise and weaponise science and technology. The goal of the export controls is to stop China from making rapid advances in artificial intelligence. Because if you want to train an AI system, you need really advanced data centers and therefore really advanced chips to do so. And today, GPU chips, the types of chips that work on AI systems and data centers, are produced by just a couple of companies, Samsung in South Korea and Taiwan's TSMC. It's an industry rife with long-term uncertainty. Chris Miller believes if China did invade Taiwan, it couldn't simply take over TSMC and gain control of the world's best chips because the company heavily relies on overseas equipment, software and materials to make them. If there were a war in Taiwan or a blockade, TSMC's production would go rapidly to zero and the entire world economy would face the greatest hit to global manufacturing since the Great Depression. We'd face disastrous delays to manufacturing production. It would be a cost measured in the trillions of dollars and it would affect every single country. It affect the US, it affect Australia, it affect Europe, Japan, even China. The hope is that China realizes this, but there's no guarantee that's the way Chinese leaders see things or that they're willing to prioritize economic considerations over their longer running strategic games.